The first thing you need to do when you edit video is to create a new sequence. You edit your video clips in sequences in the timeline panel. So in this lesson, I'm going to give you a few different ways to create a new sequence. And let's start a new project from scratch here. Double click on the Premiere Pro icon. Start a new project by clicking this guy. And you've seen this before now. Let's browse to the desktop and select your My Premiere Pro Exercise Files folder and click Select Folder. Then you can type in any name you want. I'm going to call it Sequences, like that. Now this time I'm not going to skip the New Sequence dialog box just yet. I want to kind of take you on a little tour of this little dialog box. This gives you all the various formats that you can use to set up a sequence. And the reason you use these formats is basically to ensure that when you add assets to your sequence, they match the size and shape and frame rate of the sequence, so you don't have any kind of confusion down the road. It's not totally critical that your sequence matches your assets attributes, but it's a good idea. And lots of times people work with sort of mixed assets. They might have some frame rates for one set of assets and a different set of frame rates for another, and you can put those on the same sequence. It's not going to be a bad thing to do that. Basically, your orientation is to try to have your sequence match the preponderance of the assets that you're going to use on it. So a good way to start is to select the sequence here that matches your hardware, that matches the format that you used on your camcorder. A lot of folks start with DV, NTSC, standard, or widescreen, and that's kind of a default thing where all kinds of video files can run on that. We're working with HD footage, though, and the HD footage we're working with here primarily was shot as an AVC HD file before it was converted to MP4s. And we're working with 1080p here, which means 1920 by 1080 in resolution and progressive scan, which means it's not interlaced, means it's like one image at a time. And we worked in this format here, 1080p 30, which is not really 30, it's 2997. It's 2997 frames per second. And so a typical sequence with this one would be like this. It says 2997 frames per second, and it's 16 by 9, which is the high definition aspect ratio, and it uses 48 kilohertz audio, which means 48,000 samples per second, which is pretty standard for shooting audio with a camcorder. And down here, it gives more specifics about the sequence itself. It says, how many tracks will there be? There'll be three audio tracks and three 5.1 tracks in this sequence and a few other odds and ends here. So that is how this sequence will look if we select this. You can select any other one here. If you work with a digital single edge reflex, you can open up this guy. And if you click on it, it says that most DSLR formats will work inside this. So it's not really geared to a camcorder. It's geared more to the size and shape and frame rate of the stuff you're going to put in the sequence. So you can select one of these things, and that's one way to go about doing it. But I think the automated way of doing it is a lot easier. And the automated way is something you do after the fact, something after you bring assets into your program. I do want to show you one more thing here, though, is the settings side of things. You can change the settings. You don't have to accept preset. You can adjust the preset to suit your purposes. Or you can create a preset from scratch. If you go up here to Custom, you can create your own preset. And a lot of folks work with screen capture software like we do here at Infinite Skills. And our screen capture software typically is not at 2997 frames per second. It may be 15 or 10 or something like that. So you can go over here and set, let's say, 10 frames per second and set up a sequence that way. However you want to do it, that's just fine. And then you can save the preset down here, and the preset will show up the next time you open up the new sequence dialog box. Okay, that's a lot of talking, but we are now going to cancel out of this and move along. What I want you to do is import some assets. So I want you to double-click here in this empty space inside the project panel. That opens up the Import dialog box. I want you to navigate to the Working Files folder, Digital Juice, Stock Footage, Subfolder, and select the first nine clips. So click on the first one, and then Shift-click on number nine there, and that selects the first nine contiguous clips there, and then click Open. There we go. That brings in those nine clips, and they're all light gray. That means they're all selected right now. If I click off to the side, I'm going to deselect them. So now we have nine clips there sitting inside the project panel. Now we're going to start making sequences. And the way we're going to do it is an automated way. But I do want to show you that you can do the manual way if you want. You can go File, New, Sequence, and guess what you're going to see? Ah, the New Sequence dialog box, which you just saw moments ago. That's one way to do things. But I'm going to click Cancel here. I'm going to do the automated way. I'm going to take a clip, scenic number one here, I'm going to drag it down here to this little new item icon. If I click that, you see there are several new items that are available inside this little guy. But if you drag a clip to it, it makes a new sequence. So I drag this clip down here, right to the new item icon, and boom, we have a new sequence. There is the clip in the sequence. The sequence shows up here inside the timeline panel. 
and the sequence shows up here inside the project panel. You can tell it's a sequence by the little icon. It has a little current time indicator running through it there and looks like tracks and stuff. And there you go, we've got a sequence. If I right click on the sequence, we can take a look at the properties and look at the sequence settings. Properties are pretty basic, I'll just click on that. And it says, look, it's 1920 by 1080, which is what we expect. It's 2997 frames per second, which is NTSC. It's 48,000 hertz, which means 48,000 samples of audio per second. And it's called Scenic 1 MP4. There you go. Close that guy down. And I'll right click on this again, and we're going to select Sequence Settings. This is more like what you'd see if you created a sequence inside the New Sequence dialog box. And what's interesting is that it's called an RE Cinema. And notice everything's grayed out here. You can't change some of this stuff. It's not really an RE Cinema video, but it matches an RE Cinema's format. So it shows that automatically. The name is not so important. It's just the other things like time base and frame size. That's important. So here we got 2997 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, square pixels, which you have in HD. It's progressive scan, which means you've got one image at a time, 30 of those per second. And then it says non-drop frame, or it could be drop frame, either way. And then it talks about audio samples versus milliseconds. These are the things you can change, and you can change the preview format, but we're not going to mess with that. We're just going to click cancel here because we're willing to accept all this stuff. And that is how the sequence got set up. I'm going to change the name by clicking on it and clicking on it again to highlight it. I'm going to type in scenic sequence. And there you go. Rather than calling it scenic 1 MP4, which is the name of the clip, it automatically takes on the name of the clip that was used to create the sequence. Let me just kind of put things in order here. I got scenic sequence on top on all of our various clips. You can also make a sequence from multiple clips. So if you just click on the first one here, scenic number two, now that we've used scenic number one, and scroll on down to scenic number nine and hold on the shift key and click on that, you've now selected eight clips. If I drag that group by clicking on one of their icons here and drag that whole group to the new item icon, It'll create a sequence with eight clips in it. How convenient is that, right? I'm going to undo that. I'll call Control or Command Z to undo that. Now I'm going to select the clips in a particular order. Let's expand the view a little bit here so I can see them all. There we go. I'm going to click on two. I'm going to hold on the Control or the Command key, Control and Windows Command on Mac, and click on four and six and eight, three, five, seven, nine. And now I'll drag it to the new item icon. And lo and behold, Two, four, six, eight, three, five, seven, nine. It creates a sequence in the order in which we selected the clips. Pretty nifty. So that's how you create sequences here inside Premiere Pro. And now we're going to start editing those sequences in the upcoming lessons.